Hi, it's Greg Hurrell here with another Vim screencast. And today I want to talk about this plugin here called VCS Jump, which is something that I released about a week ago. Um, it's something that I've had in my dot files for many years, probably something like five years. Uh, and only just recently got around to packaging into an independent format where people could get it. Uh, but the basic idea of the plugin is uh, that it allows you to jump around a version control system. So uh, the supported systems are Git and Mercurial. Um, and this is actually really just a, a port of a similar thing that comes with Git itself. Uh, if you look at the official Git repo, um, there's this bash script called Git Jump. At least I think it's a bash script. Yeah, that's right. It is a, it's a shell script, um, which jumps around the interesting places in your repo. So what's interesting? It could be something like uh, places where you've made a change. It could be places where there's a merge conflict, um, or it could be places which uh, Git grep finds for you when you do a search. Um, and so VCS Jump does the same, but for Git and Mercurial transparently. So depending on what kind of repo you're in, it'll implement the behavior in terms of the version control system of, of that repo. Um, other than that, it is really, it's just a Ruby port of the, the Bash script because it's easier to do some things in Ruby than Bash. Uh, and it of course has Vim integration. So I guess I'm gonna show you that integration now and uh, that'll give you a sense of what kind of things can be done with this tool. So I'm in, I'm in my dot .files repo here. And if we look, it's pretty much clean. There's no changes. Uh, and so if I were to run VCS jump at this point to look at the changed areas of the repo, there wouldn't be any. So let's, let's just do that. So I hit the binding, which is leader D. Um, and it says there VCS jump diff and I hit return and nothing happens because there are no changes. Uh, but if I make a change, so let's make a change, say to the readme, like to do flesh this out. Uh, and now I rerun VCS jump diff by hitting the binding. Now you'll see it pops up the quick fix listing. Um, and it not only knows that the readme has changed, but it knows that it's line four of the readme that's changed. So I'm gonna make another change. Let's go to my DMRC, for example, and maybe change the order of some items. So if I look over here in the shell, you'll see I've now got two changes. When I hit the binding again, um, now my quick fix listing is going to have two changes in it and I can move between them like I would normally with a quick fix listing. Um, I've got this bound to up and down, uh, which I think is a good use for the cursor keys in Vim. Um, but if you don't have a binding like that, it would be colon C next and colon C previous to jump between items in the quick fix listing. So this is a trivial example, but you can imagine in a big project where you've, when you've made a hundred changes, this is actually really handy to find your way to all the places where those changes have been made. And because the quick fix listing uh, knows the line number on which you made the change, it's not just going to dump you in the file. It's actually going to take you uh, directly to the place that was changed. So if I go up to the top of the file here and make another change, so I comment out a file and I hit the binding again to refresh the listing, you'll see that VimRC now appears twice. And when I move between the places, it goes to the lines that I changed and not just an arbitrary location in the file. Uh, so that's the first mode, diff. Um, and there's one more thing that I want to show before moving on and that is that this thing here can actually take parameters so uh, let's go back to my previous state um, so now I've got a clean work tree again um, and I'm going to run VCS jump diff and you'll see that once again the quick fix listing is empty because there are no changes what about if I wanted to see what happened in the last commit well I could pass a parameter here and uh, I'm going to say the parent of the current commit so head tilde but I could really pass anything here. I could pass you know, a range of commits, or I believe I could also pass a, uh, a path to say, well, show me only things that changed in my dot .files directory. Um, and so why don't we do that actually? Oops, why don't we make that a little more interesting? What, what's changed in the last 100 commits in my dot .files directory? So when I run that, you'll see the quick fix listing now has a bunch of things in it. Um, and of course I can jump between them. Um, so that can be pretty handy too. So that is diff mode. Now let's look at the next mode, which is uh, merge conflict resolution mode. So as I said before, I've got no changes here. So I'm gonna make a couple of commits. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm gonna make a couple of commits on, on different branches so that I have a conflict. Um, so let's go to the readme again, because that's a nice, easy one. Um, and let's just put foo here. And let's make a commit. Oops. So yeah, foo, that looks good. Um, and then let's check out the head. It's gonna be a detached head, and we're just gonna make a conflicting change. It's going to be bar. Um, same thing. So now I've got two commits. 
Um, if I look at my history here, you'll see I've got these two commits that are independent of one another. I've also got a stash which we can ignore because it has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Um, so let's try merging the two branches together. So I'm going to do merge master and I'll get a merge conflict. Um, and if I look here, it tells me that the file that conflicts is readme.md. Now, once again, this is a super trivial example. Uh, and if it really was this simple, I could just open the file and fix the merge conflict. But let's imagine I have a nasty merge conflict that touches a bunch of files. Um, so now I'm going to hit the binding VCS jump diff, but this time instead of diff, I'm going to type merge. I mean, now the quick fix listing uh, contains a list of hunks that are in, in conflict. Um, so if I click on that, it takes me to it. Um, like, of course, if I was in another file, just say I was in my, my color vim file there and I hit the binding, it would have taken me to the readme file. Um, so that's another neat way to move around in the, inside the Git or the Mercurial repo. Um, one thing to note about this is Bit. Dim comes with its own tools for viewing diffs and resolving merge conflicts. So I'm not going to cover those here. I think that would be a good subject for another screencast. Um, at this point, I'm just showing how to jump around between conflicting hooks. And if you are somebody who uses Vim's built-in tools, then you can use them together. So you can have your quick fix listing full of a bunch of files with conflicting hunts, hunks, and then jump between them and use Vim's diff tools to fix the conflicts. So I think I'm probably going to do another screencast on that. But that will be a separate occasion. Um, so the third and final mode that we haven't looked at yet is the so-called grep mode. So if I hit the binding and this time type grep, uh, I can pass arguments here that will be fed to the underlying version control system. So let's say I want to find ferret. Um, and it tells me these are the places uh, where the word ferret appears in my, my, uh, my dot files. So one thing to note about this is that um, maybe you're already using a tool for searching within within Vim. Um, and in fact, Ferret is the tool that I use, uh, which is why I search for it. <coughs> uh, let's compare what I would get if I'd have made the same search with Ferret. So I'm gonna hit the binding for Ferret, and I'm gonna search for the word Ferret. And this time I got nothing. And the reason I got nothing is because Ferret is a wrapper for tools like ACK or RipGrep or the Silver Searcher. And all of those ignore dot files. They ignore files that are ignored by gitignore. And so in this case, if we look at my previous search, um, those were dot files. There was dot uh, git modules and something in my dot vim directory. So that's why ferret doesn't show me anything. Um, and in fact, if I want ferret to show me something here for a search like that, um, I can pass uu because I'm using rip grep. That's gonna get passed through the rip grep and that's gonna cause rip grep to do an unrestricted search. So this time, if I run the ferret search, um, you'll see it found everything, including things that git wouldn't find like this stuff here. For example, git is not going to look at its own dot git directory. Uh, but ferret and rip grep found literally everything, uh, sometimes too much. I think the other thing to notice is that the ferret search does have a noticeable delay because it's it's looking at the file system. So to my eye, that looks like about a second. Um, if you compare that to the uh, the VCS jump version, whoops, uh, VCS jump version, which is going to be uh, grep ferret, it is basically instantaneous because Git is fast at this kind of thing. Um, but it is a, 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 the situation is that you probably want to tool, use the right tool for the job. For me, using Ferret is usually the right tool for the job, but there are occasions where, uh, where um, using VCS Jump might be the right tool for the job. Uh, so those are the three modes, and I think the last thing I want to show you before I go is just a, a quick glimpse at the implementation of this. So let's look at VCS Jump. We'll look at the script itself super quickly. Um, you can see inside the plugin, it's just a Ruby script, like I said. And you can actually run this script independently if you want. So for example, if I do uh, ECS jump, it just prints help. And it tells me I've got these three modes that I can use and I can run them from the command line if I want. And what it's going to do is open Vim with whatever the results are. So just say I grep for ferret again, it opened Vim uh, and the results are in the quick fix listing and I can move between them like that. So in practice, you could put this uh, executable in your path if you wanted to bring up Vim uh, with the quick fix list pre-populated like that. In practice, I, I never do that, but it's an option. Um, and so that's VCS jump. Uh, as I said, I will probably make a screencast soon on how to use Vim's built-in diffing tools to resolve merge conflicts. Uh, but until then, if you want to learn about the next episode, just hit the subscribe button. I hope this was useful to you and I'll see you later.